Hello, Fiber friends. We are going to take an in-depth look at the double drive spinning wheel system. Let's talk about how it works, how to set it up, and then we'll troubleshoot some problems you may run into when you're adjusting your tension. My hope is that after watching this video, you will feel confident and have a good understanding of how the spinning wheel works so that you can spin the yarn you want to spin. Welcome to my channel called Jillian Eve. I'm Evie and I make yarn. Tune in every Tuesday for a new spinning wheel tutorial and make sure to tune in on Fridays for a live spinning wheel podcast. Bring your projects, bring your questions, it's a good time. Okay, back to the topic. Double drive refers to a type of spinning wheel tensioning system. In a double drive system, the drive wheel provides power to both the whirl and the bobbin. Pretty much all antique flax wheels are double drive wheels. You will also see double drive systems on Canadian production wheels like this one right here. And you can find double drive systems on certain models from modern wheel makers such as Ashford, Kromsky, Lendrum, and many, many others. Double drive wheels are known for being very fast spinning wheels and they're very good at creating thin and consistent yarns. Most double drive wheels have a fairly small orifice diameter, so spinning bulky or very highly textured or slubby yarns becomes pretty difficult to achieve on a double drive wheel. Single drive systems such as Irish or Scotch tension are much better choice if you're looking for a wheel that's going to spin the best bulky or more textured kind of yarn. Let's go over the names for the different parts of the spinning wheel so that we'll be on the same page and when I refer to something you'll know exactly which part of the wheel I'm talking about. This is my vintage Ashford Elizabeth. She had a mishap, so she actually has the drive wheel of an Ashford traditional, but she's going to be my lovely assistant for today. Here to my right, of course, we have the drive wheel. And then here to the left, we have the flyer assembly on a castle wheel. The wheel is oriented differently, so this whole section will be up higher and the drive wheel will be down below the flyer assembly. However, the mechanics that I'll be discussing about how a double drive system works are the same for the Saxony style wheel or a castle wheel. It's just that the parts are oriented in a different way. Let's take it apart and get some close-ups. This is called a flyer. Next is the bobbin. You will notice it has a groove on one side. This is essential, so keep this in mind. I'm going to call this the bobbin groove. Some people refer to it as the bobbin whorl, but since we have another part called a whorl, I think bobbin groove or just bobbin will be less confusing. If you look carefully at the groove on the bobbin, you will notice that it should be a little bit wide and have a smooth sort of a U shape. The bobbin slides onto the flyer with the groove of the bobbin being towards the open end of the flyer. And here is the whirl. This disc is attached to the shaft of the flyer. It also has a groove in it, or sometimes possibly two or three. The groove in the whirl is a deeper and more narrow groove. It has more of a V type of a shape to it. I'm going to take just a second here to talk about two different ways that the whorl may attach to the flyer. One way is for it to interlock. This is not perfectly round, it's flat on one side. The whorl slides onto the end there and because it's not perfectly round, it holds on to that shaft and it will turn together. This is the flyer assembly of an antique Swedish flax wheel from the late 1800s. This shows you the other way that the whorl can attach to the shaft of the flyer. It is with threads and it will screw onto the flyer shaft. But a word of caution, if you have a screw on whorl, be careful. Do you know the saying righty tidy lefty loosey? 
on a whorl, it's going to be the opposite. Whorls are reverse threaded, so they don't unscrew during spinning since most double drive wheels are designed to turn clockwise. If you do come across an antique wheel, or if you have one of your own, and the whorl feels stuck, it may be that you're trying to unscrew it the wrong way. Please be careful and gentle with old wheels. Some of them have brittle bones. I want you to notice that the groove on the bobbin and the groove on the whorl have slightly different diameters. The whorl is going to have a larger diameter than the groove on the bobbin. If your whorl and bobbin groove are the exact same size, the double drive system will not work. For this wheel, the tension is controlled through a screw that slides the mother of all back and forth, and it's turned on this knob right here. A common misconception, one that I myself had when I first started spinning, is that double drive means two drive bands. It does not. It has one very long drive band that's configured in a figure eight. Remember, the double means two parts are getting the power from the drive wheel, not that there are two drive bands. What material is best for our drive band? Good question. I prefer to use a cotton thread, but depending on who you ask, some people say use whatever's available. Sometimes it's spinner's preference, sometimes it depends on what works best for your particular spinning wheel. So if you're unsure, play around and find something that works for you. When you tie on a new drive band to your double drive system, you want to make sure that your tension is all the way loose. You want to move the flyer assembly as close to the wheel as possible. When we put the drive band onto the wheel, what we're actually doing is creating a figure eight, like this. There will be a point in the drive band where it crosses over itself to make that figure eight shape. The cross will be located <laughs> between the drive wheel heading towards the flyer assembly. So if you're spinning in a counterclockwise direction, the cross will be on the top. If you're spinning in a clockwise direction, the cross will be on the bottom. The drive band goes around the bobbin groove and whorl and the drive wheel twice. Then we tie it off. Let's take a close up look at the flyer assembly so that we can really understand how this double drive system works. Because the drive band goes over the whorl and the bobbin, it will make them both spin as long as the drive wheel is spinning. But wait, there's more. Remember how the diameter of the whorl is different in size than the diameter on the bobbin? This means the drive band will make them turn at different rates. Do you remember Lisa Frank? Well, I dug out some old stickers and they're still sticky. So let's do a little experiment. I put a puffin sticker on the bobbin and a emperor penguin sticker on the whorl. I'm going to turn the drive wheel and we're going to see which penguin will win the race. Here we go. I'm turning it, of course, much slower than it would be at a spinning speed so that we can see the difference here. Our puffin is winning. Because the groove on the bobbin and the groove on the whorl are different diameters, the drive band is going to turn the bobbin faster than it will turn the whorl. In fact, as we go here, our puffin is about halfway and soon it will be overtaking and lapping our <laughs> penguin. <laughs> There we go. Now they're lined up again. Now we add our spinning fiber to the bobbin. I have other tutorials talking about drafting the fiber. So for this tutorial, I'm just focusing on the mechanics of the wheel. I will use a piece of already finished yarn for this demonstration. Because the fiber that we're spinning connects the bobbin to the flyer, 
it holds them together and it causes the flyer and the bobbin to spin at the same rate. Let's have another penguin race now that we've attached our fiber to the bobbin. I'm going to hold on to the spinning fiber so that there is no take up. Now let's see what happens to our penguins. And you can see the penguins stay together. For this to be possible, something has to give, literally. The speed of the bobbin is slowing down to match the speed of the flyer. This is because the drive band is slipping over the groove on the bobbin. Remember when I said that the groove on the bobbin is shallower and has more of a U shape? This allows the drive band to slip on the bobbin when there is tension held on the spinning fiber. The groove on the whirl, however, is a V shape. So as the tension increases on the drive band, it sinks deeper into that groove and is held tighter with more friction. You always want the full power of the drive wheel to be applied to the whirl at all times. Now we're really ready to spin. As we draft our fiber and hold on to it, the flyer and bobbin spin at the same rate. So the wheel does nothing but add twist to the fiber. Then when we're ready for it to wind on, we can give it the slightest bit of slack. This shifts the control of the bobbin back to the wheel, not the tension of the fiber that we're drafting. The drive band will stop slipping and the flyer and bobbin will start to turn at different rates again. This means the bobbin will pull the yarn onto itself as it once again begins to spin faster than the flyer. Watch what happens when I turn the bobbin faster than I turn the flyer. It drags the yarn over itself and the yarn is beginning to wind on. So let's see the whole system in action. I'm holding on to the fiber, not letting it go anywhere, but as soon as I give it just a little slack, it starts to wind onto the bobbin. But I can hold on to it and draft until I'm ready, give it a little slack, and once again it will wind onto the bobbin. Hold on to it, and when I'm ready, let the friction take over the bobbin so they spin at different rates and the yarn will wind onto the bobbin. The mechanics of how this double drive system works really are a marvel. There's such a delicate balance between having enough friction to turn the bobbin under the drive wheel's control and bring that yarn onto the bobbin and being able to break that friction and allow it to slip so that the control is in your hands while you are drafting. Because the system is such a delicate balance, a delicate dance, if you will, between the wheel and the spinner, you always want to make sure that you're spinning double drive with just enough tension. You don't want too much tension, and of course you can't have too little tension or nothing will work. So these are some things to watch out for when you're spinning to know if your tension is where it should be. You want to turn your tension up just enough so that you start to feel the fiber drawing onto the bobbin. You will know you are in that sweet spot if you can pull the yarn off the bobbin without turning the flyer. This is the correct tension right now for this wheel. There are some sure signs to look out for to know if your tension is too strong. So here's what might happen. You might feel like the wheel is just yanking the yarn out of your hands. You might start to feel sore in your hands and fingers from keeping a death grip on your fiber. You might have thin spots appearing in your drafting where the wheel is pulling the fiber from you too fast. Your yarn might not have enough twist. After all, it has to spend some time out here before it goes onto the wheel for it to gather enough twist. You might feel like your wheel is getting ahead of you and you have to rush to keep up. If any of these things are happening while you're spinning, try loosening the tension. You probably have it too tight. What about the opposite? 
What if your tension is too loose? Well, these are some things that you might notice. You might feel like you can't get the yarn onto the wheel fast enough. You might feel like there's too much slack in your yarn or that your wheel just isn't responsive to you. You might notice your hands are working further and further and further away from the orifice as you feel like you need to back it up so it doesn't accumulate too much twist. Your drive wheel might feel slippery as you treadle because the drive band is too loose to get enough grip as the wheel turns. It could be slipping. For any of these issues, try increasing your tension. One other thing I wanted to mention about spinning on a double drive setup is that there's this constant shift between the drive band having enough grip and friction on the bobbin to turn the bobbin at its own rate and it having enough slip so that the bobbin is turning at the rate of the flyer. Think about running or driving your car. When you're going one speed, it takes a moment for you to build back up to the other speed. There's a transition period there. So while you're drafting, don't shove the yarn at the wheel because it needs that moment to accelerate again. It can't just suddenly grab up all of that fiber as fast as you're giving it. You need to really feel the tension on the wheel and you'll feel it shift so that it'll be ready to take up. When you have practice spinning on a double drive wheel and you get to know your own wheel, of course, that transition from holding back the fiber to draft it and letting the wheel take it up, that transition starts to be very smooth and very natural and very subtle. If you're working with your yarn and then you're feeding your yarn, just allow it to have a moment to regain its speed so that it can take that yarn up onto the bobbin. If you're feeding the yarn on too fast, it'll start to coil up and you'll get funny little noodle things sticking out where it starts to kind of want to ply on itself. And your bobbin will start to look messy. We don't want a messy bobbin. Not for the kind of yarn that we'll be producing with a double drive. If you learned something new about spinning today, please give this video a thumbs up and consider sharing it with someone else who might enjoy this tutorial. I have another tutorial about spinning wheel ratios that will give you some more understanding about how spinning wheels work. A link for that video will pop up in just a moment. But one last thing before you go, if you wouldn't mind, leave a comment in the comment section down below. Tell me your favorite kind of yarn to spin and what system you use to spin it. Is it a double drive? <laughs> I'll go first, so look for my comment down there too. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and tune in every Tuesday for a new spinning tutorial and join me on Fridays for the live spinning podcast. See you next time. Happy spinning!